Peter's on. It is hey there. PM. Hi. Peter, you're here early. Okay, so you made it just in time. Um, your daughter must have had a short speech. It is 7 o'clock. We do have a form. Short and sweet. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh, very good. Um, we will be beginning the meeting of the Finance Committee. I am now looking for the script I'm supposed to read. Um, I did already check and make sure that everybody can be can hear and be heard. So, good evening. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting of the Finance Committee is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel. It's being conducted remotely. The Town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19, is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread and all town facilities are currently closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. The order, which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 Information Center page, accessed through the town manager's webpage, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. If you are not on the Zoom meeting and would like to make a public comment, please send an email to T. B U R C H F I E L D at LunenburgOnline.com, and that will be read at the end of the meeting. For this meeting, we are convening by Zoom conference as posted on the town's website. If you go to the town calendar, you will find the link to join on the town calendar agenda for the finance committee meeting. And we're going to now turn to the first item on the agenda. I do just want to make sure that people do know that anytime we do take a vote, if we do take a vote, it will be taken by roll call. And with that, um, I'm not aware of any announcements. Uh, I will ask at this time if anybody on the committee has a public comment. Seeing no public comment. I do actually, um, I'm sorry to see that Karen's not here. I did want to thank her for her very quick turnaround on the debt um, spreadsheet. I think um, that was in my mailbox by the end of the meeting, um, by the end of the last meeting. So I, I do want to let her know that I do appreciate that. Um, then with that, then we'll just go straight Harry. into, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there was a, is that Peter? My, hand, my hand is up. I'm not sure oh, if you Dave. see it. Oh, okay. I see it now. Okay, go ahead, Dave. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, just wanted to mention, uh, as a member of the Board of Health, uh, we'll be meeting next Monday night, and on the agenda will be discussion of uh, protocols for uh, some of the outdoor activities that are hopefully going to be allowed to return in the near future, including um, beach openings, uh, camp opening. I'm not sure exactly what that has to do. Uh, that's in uh, referring to, except for maybe down at Shady Point. Um, but there'll be some uh, extensive discussion on protocols for uh, the continued reopening of things uh, in town. I don't think there'll be any uh, decisions made that night, but there will be a review of protocols. Um, just out of curiosity, will, will the Board of Health be identifying protocols for town meeting as well or no? I believe that was on the, the list also. Um, I'm not sure how deeply we're getting into it. Jim Garaffi is on the team that uh, is putting together the protocols for that, and he'll be attending our meeting. So I'm sure we'll okay. have some kind of update on it at that meeting. Okay, yeah, I, do, I know that there is, there's also a, um, a pre-meeting for the annual town meeting that will be held next Wednesday evening. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, and I'm sure Heather's got more, more up to date, probably through today, uh, information on what's going on. I don't get updated every day. I can. Okay. Alan, if you want. Yeah, you might as well, Heather, because you're up. You're it's a town manager report, so. Okay. 
Um, so we had, after the select meeting where uh, Jim Garofi was there as well as the police chief, fire chief, um, the town moderator. Um, so discuss all discussion on different protocols that we could put in place. We had a follow-up meeting at the middle school, high school last Wednesday um, to go over a plan. Um, so all those members were present as well as the town clerk as well and the superintendent. And we will be discussing that uh, draft plan at Tuesday's selectmen's meeting. Okay, and just as, a, as an aside now, I'm gonna assume that everybody on the finance committee received the email asking whether you were planning on attending and physically attending the, um, the annual town meeting. Um, and I just wanted to confirm that everybody, as far as I know, is planning on attending the, the annual town meeting physically, but I don't know if that's true. Me the way it was John? the way it was worded, you only needed to respond if you were not attending. Okay. If I yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm just I'm just asking to to because I I'm just curious at this point. So, John, you're planning on attending? I am. And Dave, you're planning on attending? Yes, I am. All right, Peter. I saw that you were attending. Jay, are you planning on attending? I'm undecided. Will we be able to attend remotely? No. I, That's not allowable so what? under law right now. Okay. But only for representative town meetings. Okay. Oh, so that, I'm that undecided. At least you know that, okay. Um, the only person that I also wouldn't have heard from yet would be Michelle, but it, from the looks of it, we would at least have a quorum going in. So. So if there's anything that we're, we're going to need to make sure it gets discussed, our last meeting before the annual town meeting will be on Wednesday the 11th. So if you anticipate, if it, by then you anticipate that you won't be coming, just um, if there's any issues that are still out there on the warrants that you want to make sure get brought up, just make sure, you know, we can, we can do some discussing on that Wednesday night. When will we know what the setup's going to be? Oh, we'll just, definitely know before. Tuesday. When? I'm sorry, Heather, I talked over you. Tuesday's selectmen's meeting, that plan is being discussed. Okay. okay, is there going to be a, are you going to be able to show us what the layout will be? Yes, there's a corresponding map that okay. is along with the plan. Okay. Are we going to be like up in the rafters? That would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, the plan is, yeah, the finance would still be on the floor in the front, but with all proper spacing uh, between you, each of you. Mm -hmm each with your own microphone. Okay. Um, all right, then with that, we, we are at really the town manager report. So if you had, um, if you wanted to go ahead with anything that you wanted to present this evening, um, we can move into that. Um, or if you had something else that you wanted to start with, um, we can go there. I'll leave it to you. Um, I only, I sent around worksheets not too long ago. There's one very minor change is the addition of a $476.21. That's the previous year's uh, invoices that's coming out of free cash. So it increases on the revenue side, $476. Okay. Um, and then basically I'm gonna, I, I know I shouldn't assume, but I, we're hearing absolutely nothing more on anything that we should be doing in terms of our, our projection? No, no news. Okay, and then um, I also did um, put in a request to, to discuss what potential, if we get to that point, um, I think it would be important for people to understand what the costs associated with unemployment are so that people don't think it's a, it's a, if we end up at that position of having to let people go, hopefully that won't happen. Um, but basically given the majority of our budget is people, um, what would be the associated costs with unemployment that have to be taken into consideration? 
Um, so I saw that on your agenda and Karen, um, have that information, but essentially it's 50% of the cost of the salary because we're a reimbursable community. Then it's only 50%. Okay. And that's in the so, current year or the following year? We, I'd have to look at the regulations on the calculation, but I think it's probably previous quarters. Right. You'll, it, basically, it's billed based on use at the end of each quarter. So there's nothing prepaid. Right. And how long does that persist? Again, that's a calculation that's in um, the maximum benefit per employee. Okay. So it, I think it's specific case by case basis. Based on longevity. Somebody's someplace very you can call it. I hear birds. <laughs> um, My window's open. <laughs> okay. Um, and then basically, along with the employment, unemployment costs, are there any associated health costs? Health insurance costs? As far as... Yeah, so I know that there's typically a surcharge. Yeah. I just can't remember what the surcharge is, so... If, if they're yeah, taking I guess basically, COBRA. I just want to make sure. I'm sorry. You mean if they were taking co COBRA with the towns? Um, not necessarily. Usually unemployment will also charge health insurance costs, but I don't know if it's different because you're a municipality. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, for towns. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll confirm if it's, that. Yeah. If it is there, I think it's a nominal amount, but but I, um, I'm not aware of that cost related to health insurance. Okay. All right. Um, any questions from anybody on the committee? Yeah, I I do. Have there have there been any war game scenarios here in terms of staffing and back to school, in particular, with the superintendent? I mean, one thought that comes immediately to mind is if we have staff in the school department that have comorbidities or any other issue that they feel unsafe returning to the workplace, have those scenarios been worked through? That's, um, I think those situations are going to be based on guidance that's going to be issued by the commissioner in June. Um, and I believe that the superintendent is working on an assessment of if there are any staff, you asking if they're planning on not coming back or mm -hmm. coming, correct. So she's looking into that now. Does, I mean, this, this goes back to the point that I was, this goes back to the point that I was, you know, trying to make it the last meeting around, you know, the the uncalculated costs of the pandemic, particularly right. relating to back to school that, you know, and I understand the fact that we're waiting for guidance. Um, but, you know, we can wait for guidance until the bills do. Um, there, there could be some substantial costs associated here. And all the CARES Act money that Lunenburg's eligible for would be unbudgeted items. So the school received um, already notification about the 198,000, which you know could be a drop in the bucket. But our total eligible amount outside of that 198 is a million twenty-eight thousand dollars. And would those costs, such as? carrying employees who can't come back because of health issues be covered under that? It's all unbudgeted expenses related to COVID-19. Mm. Okay. I mean, part of the question may be, and obviously this really belongs with the school committee rather than 
Um, but one of the things that I would wonder about is I know a lot of school districts are talking about having some kind of a hybrid remote learning and regular classroom learning scenario. And in a scenario like that, basically somebody who can't come back or doesn't feel safe coming back would be somebody who might be tapped for doing uh, more remote learning type activities. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, you like, that's what's really hard. Because you could have, um, I know that uh, Lunenburg is a big user of virtual high school, um, and I know that part of the reason why they get seats is because, or the cost of the seats is reduced by the number of people they have actually running classes. So it's any one of those, uh, you know, like war gaming type things would probably, for that type of activity, would probably be um, more easier to handle within the school committee, understanding what it is, all the roles are. But um, I will say that Desi has been putting off a lot of their um, updates just because they really don't know where they're going with any of this. So, so you're right. I mean, basically, uh, we could be waiting for guidance until the, the bills are due. Um, but the other, you know, types of scenarios that are, are probably things that we have to be thinking about is, all right, so if we do look to see that there's a 20% cut in state aid and we have to come up with another million dollars somewhere, where would it be? And I think that given that we know that, and maybe we don't know, and maybe it would be good to have a thought around deferring all of the capital plan until November if we had to and just not spend it until hopefully November, by November we'd have better information. Um, but short of that, I, I don't know, um, and I don't know if the town has taken a look at if we had to reduce um, services anywhere, how we would do that again. So, um, or do we get to the point of cutting people, or do we have people who are working in town offices who have the same issue around comorbidity and not feeling safe in um, that type of an environment where they have to go face-to-face -face with the public regularly? So, yeah, it's definitely an interesting problem, um, and and it's an you know interesting to think in terms of people who would be afraid to come back, um, especially given what the how the school situation is much more packed with uh, people than a lot of other types of activities or jobs. Um, well, it's not just interesting; it's you know to the point that you made. It's directly related to decisions that we need to make in two weeks and two days. Yep. yep. Dave? Yeah, I just uh, want to throw this out here, and I know this is totally against policy, but free cash is money available to the town. And I just want to throw it out there and, and have this committee thinking at what point might we decide to throw that policy out the window and preserve jobs by using free cash? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, these are very, could be very tough times, hopefully not, but that is a cash source that right now is not figured into preserving jobs. So I, I just want to throw that out there that, you know, that money is there. We can appropriate for anything we want. It's just using free cash for um, payroll and stuff like that is not the greatest policy in the world. But if you need to preserve jobs, that's the only cash you got. Are we going to do it? Well, I think the other um, question, uh, John, I saw your hand go up and I saw it go down. So I'm going to come back to you. Um, but um, I think the other issue that presents itself is if we are in a situation where we don't even know how many people we might have who would be concerned about coming back, that could be a problem. I also think that what the schools are trying to plan for in the fall is the potential for a second redo of remote, just a whole, everybody goes home and we do remote learning for a semester or two. Um, and if that's the situation, um, it, that just creates a whole different scenario. So, um, well, it's a I, it's a different scenario, but it's a scenario that unfortunately we're somewhat familiar with right now. It's actually 
right. a more predictable scenario in terms of the outcomes than many of the unknowns of these hybrid situations or having to deal with, you know, people not wanting to return from work when we have a plan to go back to physical government and education. Um, right. You know, and, and that's, you know, it's really the, uh, believe me, I, 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 I don't want my kids, you know, doing this remote learning thing a day more than they need to. But the, but the reality is, is that we know what that costs as a finance committee, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other stuff, we don't know. We have no idea. Right, because there is no guidance on what you do with somebody who does not want to return to work because they don't feel safe. I'm not sure what the town can take as a position, because if somebody doesn't return because they don't feel safe, are they entitled to keep the position? Or no. is it, you know, or you, how else would you handle that? And, and whether that's one of those unfunded things that comes up that might be covered under the COVID um, money's great but in the meantime yeah i'm not sure it's it's going to take a lot of people coming to support a position on how to handle that and again the reason why i'm thinking the school committee might have a better way of looking at it would be that they might look at some of those people and say well you know well we're going to we're going to need remote um and when i say remote learning i think i really mean individual like classroom on not just remote learning but remote credit worthy, uh, credit eligible classes being taught online that the, that some of these folks might end up participating in. Don't know. Um, John, I sorry, I uh, did, did mean to go back to you on the policy question. Yeah, well, I just wanted to echo what Dave said about the use of free cash. It's, it's it, we, we have this pot of money and it's supposed to be used for certain things for policy, but we've got an, a quite an atypical situation here is a part of money to the extent that we can, in fact, uh, use free cash as a way to mitigate longer term expenses. I think that's a, yeah, that, that's a good first thing, I think, as we use of free cash. I also think that I, I agree with Peter in his comment about the fact that we now know a little bit more about the cash flow circumstances that, that, this, that, that this brings us. But what we don't know, I think, is how long, this, how persistent this is going to be. We're guessing that at the opening of school, there'll be some sort of transition to the schools, to, to, to some some new normal for the schools. We don't know. One of the frustrations of that also is the longer we don't know what schools are going to look like, uh, are we going to sit back and wait and get guidance and protocols and then rush to spend the money to get the materials and uh, thermal scanning capability, all this kind of stuff. And then, boop, lo and behold, we get to September and they say, no, you're not going back to school. So all that money has been spent uh, procuring and, and installing materials. And then you're at home again. Yeah. Well, I can only say that I know that the schools are, are having these discussions and asking each other these questions and looking to each other for ways on how those school districts are going to be addressing some of these questions. And, and none of them are, the, all, the one that's new that I hadn't, hadn't heard was, uh, you know, like what if you have people who are afraid to come back or would be put th putting themselves at risk to come back um, or at an increased risk, uh, so, which is an interesting question. Um, but okay. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard hybrid, I've heard double double shifts, so that you got one group in the morning, one group in the afternoon. I've got two days a week here and two days remote, you know, so it's, there's a lot of people um, discussing a lot of different um, ways to address how you bring people back. Heather, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I can tell you that anxiety is not a uh, reason for keeping your job due to this for, you know, on a personnel level. No, no I think reason although, for, although accommodation for, um, I'm sorry, Heather, go ahead and finish up. It's not a qualified uh, event under FMLA or EFMLA for that. All right. 
But I believe but, an but accommodation medical, for a pre-existing medical condition is. Right. That's exactly what I was going to say, Peter. Uh -huh. But that's different than we uh, just are yeah. afraid to come back. Right. Well, right, they're right. afraid uh, because they have the medical condition, but there are protocols for that and they can apply for accommodations. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. And as long as those accommodations are taken and those would be the taking of temperature, the sanitizing of the, the room, the, the, you know, like the social distancing, like all of the protocols would, and again, it's untested and that's what makes it all so hard, but any of those things would be considered reasonable accommodation. So um, what wouldn't be a reasonable accommodation would be, yeah, you don't have to, you know, come to work if, you know, if the protocols are all followed. So that's, that's what's going to be hard. Peter? So, I, you know, I, I think where I'm at on this relative to our purview here is, mm -hmm. you know, we've done two budgets now. Right. We did a, a needs-based budget before COVID, and we did a, a COVID contextualized budget. The the COVID contextualized budget sets aside, you know, an amount of money that, you know, in the event that we lose revenue, a 10% drop in state aid, we can absorb that through the money that we've set aside or not spent um, in, in the budget. And I know I'm speaking in very loose terms here um that's an assumption what i would say a shot in the dark assumption around a revenue shortage what we don't know is number one what the revenue situation actually is could be a lot worse and we don't know what the cost side is we really don't and and the scenarios have not been run for us. Um, and, and I don't know if they will be, um, but I feel right now that we don't know more than we do know. And, and so, you know, back to the, back to the decisions that, or the questions that we were asking ourselves a couple of weeks ago around free cash, you know, I, I feel less comfortable today than I did two weeks ago and certainly more than th three weeks ago about expending free cash on capital. You know, I mean, I, there, there may be some emergency circumstances. The culvert comes to mind where we, you know, we, the, the, there's a timing issue, but I feel like we need to scrounge every last cent until we have more information than we have right now. Yeah. By the way, the other, the other point that I would add here, a good portion of the money that we're saving, relatively a third of it, is the school department's sal salary reserve fund that we rated to do this. The teacher's contract expires in a month and two days. And so we're doing this on the backs of assumptions that we're making around collective bargaining. And meanwhile, most of the other departments have settled their contracts. And have contracts in place and raises in place for fiscal year 21. So, you know, I, I, I think that we would be doing an incredible disservice, in particular to our school department, to be spending any money that we're not 100% convinced needs to be spent between the 1st of July and mid-November. Mm -hmm. We also have two other two collective bargaining units on the town side that have been postponed as well. Yeah. But Heather, that uh, salary reserve account is still intact, though at this point, correct? On the town side. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, funded. It's, yeah. Okay. See, that's that's what concerned me when I heard that's how the school made up they're part of the reduction because it's, the it's not year they had a salary reserve. They I'm never, sorry. this is the first year in their budget that they've had a salary reserve line. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, I, I seem to recall that we're at the end of a three-year contract and the contract, the, the contract that we're in 
was settled prior to town meeting of fiscal year 17 or 18, whatever the year was. So it, it's not it, it's not a relevant point. Right, so there was no need for a, a reserve account because it was already settled. Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I have to, I have to claim ignorance of the, the school budget. I tend not to, not to look too closely at it. So, um, I, I could be mistaken, that, but I think uh, the same thing happened six years ago, two contracts ago. Uh, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but one of the reasons that the contract three years ago cost the town so much money was that the one three years previous to that had been cut to the bare bones because of the financial situation we were in at that time. So mm -hmm. we're, we're basically looking at a repeat of what Before happened over the last six years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but even then, I, I, I don't recall in the last, in my memory, um, an expired teacher. I could be wrong about this, but I don't recall an expired teacher's contract in the last 10 years. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall one either, but I think the other thing that one of the reasons why I might not recall it is that I don't know that they're, they're not, are they ratified at town meeting? I've, I don't recall ever voting to ratify a school committee budget. I mean, a school committee um, or a teacher's salary schedule. No, the school committee ratifies them. Right, so it never comes to town meeting, so you don't know. Right, so it's just built into the salary amount. Well, What's you would know if they right? needed more money, you know, at a special town meeting Sorry or about something that. like that. But I don't recall that happening any time right. recently. No, I don't either. I'm sorry, John, were you trying to get in? No. No, it's not okay. listening. All right, so given that there's, there's nothing much that we know, and, um, and I'm not sure what the best way to go about this is. I don't know if maybe um, what might be helpful would be to, to basically if each of us picked a couple towns and, and reached out to finance committees and other towns to see, you know, like just to get a sense of what's going on with people who we don't know that might um, be towns most similar to us, probably if we go to the clear gov thing and find out who, who they match us up with and, and contact some of those finance committees. Um, I also don't know if, and, and I had meant to look at this, but I, I've been kind of swamped at work. Um, the um, Association of Town Finance Committees, I'm not sure if they have any um, materials on their website that we would be able to avail ourselves of in terms of um, people commenting or, or trying to address what they see coming down the road. And then also just on a clarification at, at this point, Heather, what is our free cash this year? What free cash could we potentially be looking at? Um, if we had to hit tap free cash for for operating expenses, you mean minus the uh, minus the capital plan? All right. Well, we know that there's six hundred some odd thousand that's right now currently sitting for the capital plan. Mm -hmm. um, but what is the total amount? So there's um, one million. $107,694. So out okay. of that, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Out of that was the um, prior year bill, the $476, capital plan for $664,800, stabilization for $210,000, and then it left a balance of two thirty-two dollars or seventeen. dollars And Heather, that two thirty-two, that's the unappropriated balance? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So potentially if 
it looked like we needed to make that recommendation going into town meeting to not not support or to look to defer some of the spending until fall um, that it would we would easily hit the 20 percent with that number if we had to but again I think a lot of this, uh, Heather, I respect your position. I respect um, the job that you do. I respect that you've been doing this for a while and you have contacts all over the place in terms of getting some sense of what's the most conservative way we can go into the budget with um, understanding that it may be worse or better. Um, I, I guess um, you're still feeling confident in the 10%. Is that true? I feel that with the surplus, yeah. and with no information from the state that that's available, as well as we have our stabilization account as well. That's true. Um, and what is in the stabilization fund? All, all totaled, it is, with all three, it's about three, three million. Okay. Right, and Pete, do you, Peter, do you know, have they been talking about these things at school committee meetings? Um, no, I don't think they had one last night, but, um, not from a scenario perspective. No, no. Okay. Um, or, or to my knowledge, and I have not been to all of them in the last few weeks. It's been, my life has been disrupted quite a bit as well. Um, but, uh, yeah. but, but not to my knowledge. Um, I, I guess my, my, and and Heather, everything that Terry said goes for me. So you know, take this take this for what it's worth. And and I I appreciate your position entirely. Um, and I'm I mean, thank God we have a three million dollar stabilization fund, and it's due to your fine work and the the work of people who have preceded me on this committee and, and leaders in town and voters in town meeting that that have gotten us to that position. Um, you know this somewhat relates to the debt discussion we're going to have later on though that stabilization account is going to affect our cost of borrowing in a few years and and i'd rather not look at that as a as a save you know i mean it is a it, it's a great backstop but it's also not something that i would like to deplete too much in the next mm -hmm. couple of years um and and i i just i simply take a more pessimistic view right now of what our, our state finances are, the likelihood that when push comes to shove, towns like Lunenburg are gonna get screwed again by the legislature, like we did last year. Um, and, uh, and, and I'd rather not put us in a situation where we don't have the flexibility to do what we need to do. And, and um, you know, the school department budget assumes normal operating functions. It doesn't assume any of this. So I, 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 I obviously you know where I stand um, with, with respect to with respect to free cash and um, and the capital budget. Um, I'd be interested to see where this committee goes and where the board of selectmen goes and what the what the position is of the voters at town meeting um i think we should plan next week to scrub the capital plan again and say okay this is an absolute no kidding around we gotta spend this before mid-november uh kind of expenditures um you know and if 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 people disagree with me that's fine i mean i you know but uh but that's where i stand I, I think I totally agree with that, Peter, and that's what I brought forward, uh, you know, in my comments about the capital plan over the past couple of meetings that, you know, the, the prioritization of what's in there, there are things that could 
very easily wait till November or next year. Uh, and like the culverts, uh, that's a high priority. There's a couple others in there that are absolute high priorities. And I see funding, if we can, funding those in the spring so that the money's available whenever they can get done. But the others, uh, I see us needing to push off till November, preserving everything. Uh, I've pushed real hard for the article for the uh, streetlights. And right now, I can't push that hard for that. I'm, I'm concerned. I, I want that to be high on the priority list, but I don't think it's high enough if we really get into a cash crunch. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I, you say by the way, I, I'd also just add one thing is I do think also we should appropriate every penny available in free cash to the stabilization fund. Um, I don't, I don't think we should carry over uh, a reserve for next year's free cash. We can, we can annotate, we can flag that money. If God willing, we don't have to spend any of this and all this is for naught. we can flag that money for next year's capital plan. Um, but I, I think that this year we need to, we need to appropriate every, every dollar available. Okay. I think I think that's been part of the plan. Anything that's deferred or, or put off it would move into stabilization in one form or another. Right. I'm talking specifically about that 234 of unappropriated free cash. Oh, okay. Yep. Now that's already that's 2020 money. It's not 2021 money. So Heather, what's what's the mechanism with that it's automatically going to carry over at this point if we don't appropriate it in november correct no if we don't appropriate it at this town meeting uh this spring it, i'm sorry yes and it fall towards uh the calculation for next year's free cash which is another available source to fund things mm -hmm. okay so potentially we could do what peter just said and if we don't choose to use that at the Springtown meeting for anything, put that into stabilization? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and my point is earmark it. So if we don't have to spend it, you know, we, we treat it as if it were free cash next mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Can we do that if we've already assigned it to stabilization? You'd have to vote to take it out and it's a two thirds vote. Or we could just put less into stabilization because we we would be basing it on the five percent. Well, we have to but if we're going to appropriate it, we got to put it somewhere. That's a the five percent is a minimum. So. Right, 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 right. No, I'm just I'm just saying that basically, even if we put it in there and we can't get it back out, oh, it, it uh, would be okay. It would count. We 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 just subtract it next year. Right, right. If we have to, I mean, you know, like it's um, as long as we're hitting the five percent of whatever the budget is. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I'm Look, looking at it as if we prepaid it. Right, right. All right, and then Peter, the way you were talking, was it your intention that we were going to meet again next week? Yeah, I thought. Or, or in two weeks. I'm sorry, not next week. We yeah. have a meeting in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, so that's the current status of the town finances. Um, that's probably also the FY 2021 budget review, unless you had more that you wanted to say about any of those things. I don't have anything more. Um, and I don't see... Until I maximize my screen again, I don't see any hands up. Okay. Um, then the next item was uh, warrant articles. Does anybody have any warrant articles that they felt they wanted to bring up again? Are yeah, we? Terry, I'm on there. Go ahead, Peter, though, first. Yeah. Um, did we do minutes? No, no, we're going to go back to it after Dave talks about Warren articles. And then oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't. I... No, no, no. That's okay. It was actually one of those, as, <laughs> as Dave was noting that he had his hand up, that um, I was thinking, oh, I skipped right over a minute. So I don't know how I did that. Okay. 
Dave, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I sort of made my comments uh, just a little bit earlier when we were talking about free cash and stuff. But um, as I have said right along, I, I very strongly hope that we can find our way, find our way clear to fund the purchase of the streetlights. Uh, as I say, I'm, I'm not as uh, adamant about it at this point because I'm getting as nervous as everybody else is that uh, we may not be in a position to really spend that money this year or, or in 2021. Sure. But there are, there are definitely some time constraints if we don't do it in 2021. And uh, so I hope we take a very good, strong look at that. My intent for bringing that up tonight was going to be to make a motion to support it or going into town meeting by this committee. I'm going to hold off with that motion at this point. Yeah, that's good. Um, because it is, I mean, it is like one of a thousand questions. And I mean, because the other, the other piece is part of the reason why it's a time issue, um, aside from the savings over time, potential savings over time, is the replacement of lights as we go forward or the replacement of fixtures as we go forward. And, and I was just thinking, well, maybe we just, you know, like leave those lights dark. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the... Um, We've done that in the what, past. <laughs> We've turned off lights. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But, you know, so if you've got a string of four and one of them is not working, then, you know, Leave you might it. be able to make it. <laughs> right, right. And then basically when we go to, you know, purchase them, they won't be worth as much. So, um, but anyway, that was that was just my thought on that. Um, yeah. I have one question for Heather. Oh, I'm if sorry. She, no, I didn't even go answer. back to minutes, and I meant to go back to minutes. Wait a minute, Dave. Let me okay. bring back the big screen. Okay. Sure. That's fine. Okay. You want to do ahead. minutes or you want me to talk? <laughs> go ahead, Dave. <laughs> okay. Heather, uh, wondering, under the present situation with the street lights contract with Unitil, can a resident request and I'm assume pay for a street light. They can. And can they request that it be not the standard street lights that we're using now, but LED? Ooh, I don't know that answer. Could we find that out at some point, but don't, you know, do, do it if you have time. I'd, I'd like an answer to that question. I know for sure that they can request to pay for it. Right. Okay. Okay, we're going to now return to the minutes since I skipped right over them. And I asked before this meeting whether people had had an opportunity to review the minutes that Peter sent out. Um, so at this point, I would ask whether anyone has uh, a motion to be made on the minutes of March the 5th. I have reviewed both of them. And thank you, Peter, Peter for sending them out to early enough for yep. school readers like me to uh, actually look at them. And uh, I, I would wholeheartedly uh, make a motion to uh, approve the minutes of March 5th. Do I have a second? Is that Jay? Yes, second. Okay. All right, so all in favor, John? Aye. Dave? Aye. Jay? Aye. Peter? Aye. Aye for myself? Um, and then on the minutes of March the 12th, I don't know, Peter, if you got my email back. I did. I did. <laughs> um, the, uh, the joke, this is the discussion around the Lake Shirley Dam. And um, Terry called me out for spelling dam the way I typically spell it. <laughs> I just asked him to take the N off for the purpose of the minute. But that was the only change. So, um, so if I have a motion on the 12th, I make a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the 12th as amended. Second. Yeah. I have a second. Dave, Dave was in with the second. Um, John. Aye. Dave. Aye. J Jay. Aye. Peter. Aye. Aye for myself. May Aye. I just interject uh, the thanks, Peter, for, for, for the minutes. They, they help, uh, yeah. help me out a lot. Thank you for your patience. I'm almost uh, within 
two months. <laughs> no, they're looking great. Thank you very much. It's also like a nice reminder of, of where we were before everything went kaflui. Mm. So, um, and actually, you know, in all of the changes that have that have happened since then. I'm sorry. Well, no. I, I thought of something that um, I want to share that about the CARES Act funding that we are sending a, a reimbursement request for fiscal 20 costs because um, that has to be in by June 5th. So okay. Karen's working on that currently. And that will okay, and then essentially mean that the emergency expense expenditure account that we created it will um, really wipe out the deficit on that end. Because they're saying we should get the money within weeks. So. Good. Yeah, good. Heather, is that the 75% reimbursement? No, that's FEMA money. So that's separate. Okay. We'll be able to apply for that later. Um, the 25% match that FEMA doesn't cover is reimbursable under the CARES Act, though. So we'll be able to submit for that for okay. portion. Thank you. So, I, I, so we have we have money floating back and forth that we really can't calculate into anywhere at this point, except that it's tied up in COVID-19 costs. Yeah, so Karen created a separate account. All those expenditures are being tracked through that separate account. Um, and maybe Karen, she just unmuted herself. Yep. Yeah. She can add. <laughs> no, everything that you said is correct, Heather. I, I have the separate account, and we do need to get the reimbursement requests together. And my understanding is that any expenses that we had from March 1st and estimated through the end of the year, we will submit to the state for. And anything, like Heather said, that's eligible for FEMA reimbursement we would get the 25% that we won't get from the from fee, from the FEMA reimbursement from this CARES Act funding. So as, as you said before, Heather, that money is basically going to wipe out the deficits that's been created by spending that money. Right. So it's a it's a zero balance at the end, more or less. Right. Okay. Um, I, I just have one kind of out of order question that I should have asked him a few minutes ago, Terry, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, Heather, has there been any communication from Monty Tech in the last several weeks? Um, that thought occurred to me while I was doing the minutes. And what occurred to me is if they see cuts in chapter 70, like we do, um, their school committee will have to make some decisions around how to accommodate those cuts. And if they're gonna be looking for additional support from the communities as a result of that i've received no communication from either the business manager or the superintendent but i can reach out to them and ask the question i mean yeah, I'm, I'm not i'm not I'm, sure that any of the communities will be all that <laughs> happy to hear from them but but i think it's something that we should at least consider as a as a potential issue to, as well they have e and d money as well, not saying that that's even a consideration. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. So I also am not sure. I'd have to take another look at the formula. I'm not sure that a reduction in Chapter 70 money should affect what the towns are doing. What do you mean? I'm not sure. I'd have to look. I, it, it may be that it would just affect the amount that the school can collect at all. So they would probably have to adjust their budget before going back to the town. I don't know. I, no, I would assume that the budget would need to be adjusted, but my understanding of the deltas between, let's say, foundation and Chapter 70, if the Chapter 70 dollars go down, but the foundation number remains the same, and they've budgeted above foundation, do they go down to foundation? Do they go below foundation? You know, because somebody's got to pay the money. Right, right. Yeah, and it may just be that yeah, I'm not sure if the if Chapter 70 would hold them harmless. I don't know. I don't know either. Just because of the nature of there's a lot of, of those, there's the a lot of regional there. schools and a lot of technical high, regional technical high schools in Massachusetts, and I'm not sure that they're going to get a free pass. 
No. No, reason why I wouldn't see getting a free pass. The the what what makes the uh, tech schools different is that they their their enrollment isn't just pulled from the whoever makes up the region. You know, like the two right. towns that make up the region. Um, but it's yeah, that's an interesting point. Um. All right, so. Next up, we did have debt on the agenda, and I don't know if people had a chance to review the spreadsheet that Karen sent out and had any questions or comments on them. I did review it, and thank you very much, Karen. Um, what I was struck by on this was um, how comparatively small our debt service retirement is going to be in the next few years. Um, in my mind's eye, looking at it on a consolidated sheet for some reason, um, it didn't strike me as such. Um, but the excludable debt on, you know, on the, on the public say on the, excuse me, um, public safety, uh, primary school, uh, and the library um, relative to all the other debt we're carrying. I guess the primary school is a big number, uh, particularly the principal on that. Um, but relative to all the other debt we're carrying is still, I mean, it's not a substantial, you know, I guess in 2024, we'll have some room, um, but not as much as I anticipated in my, in my mind. Right. I guess we're going to go from three, think, three, three to two, five in 2023, right. um, which I don't know what that translates to in if we were to go out and borrow in the, in the next couple of years and then bond for another 20 years, what that means in borrowing capacity if we were to replace that debt service. Um, but I, you know, I think that that needs to be part of the discussion that we have. Um, if we're ever going to expect the citizens to pony up for TC Passios and Turkey Hill and other stuff. No, you're right. And it basically, it's been one of those things that we've been looking at um, since we first wrote the, um, the debt policy was trying to stay away from taking on um, more debt, which, but we're getting to a point now where we're going to have to do something. So um, between the school, between the patios, between the, all of the buildings that are still standing vacant. Um, so, um, and I, I guess uh, I've probably looked at the numbers long enough over time to, to when I first came on the committee, quite frankly, FY 2024 was looking amazing <laughs> 10 years ago because <laughs> we yeah. were just in such a hard spot. So, um, but, but you're right. I mean, basically what's coming right on the tail of it is um, a decision about um, whether Turkey Hill is going to be a renovation or if there's going to be a, a, a new build. So, um, and what funds are going to be available from the state to be able to supplement anything that the town seeks to do. Um, I do have um, on the bottom of the sheet, when we talk about Meadowwoods water betterment revenue, um, is that revenue that's supposed to offset money that was spent for the Meadowwoods improvement? Yes. Okay. So, and then, then, then that's just, as far as you know, is, is, is that, is that being collected? Karen? I'm curious. I, well, I, it, there was a time that they were behind on the water betterment. Well, on, because it's a dollar for dollar match. Meadowwoods gives us a dollar for dollar match for the debt service that we pay. And they are in tax title, but they are keeping their taxes current. So I can tell you for FY20, 
we received the amount that was budgeted, but they still owe for some prior stuff. Um, it was made up, obviously, through overestimates and other revenues in the general fund. So we didn't have a revenue deficit or anything like that. But they they are making arrangements to, um, to be current, and they are keeping their taxes current now. So I can't. I don't anticipate that that will be a problem in the near future. It could be, but hopefully not. They have a new receiver. Is that what it's what it is, Heather? A new, a new yeah. receiver. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe they're still in receivership. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Well, I still. I mean, basically, I think that was probably the first town meeting I went to was when they they voted to to oh, take there. on that debt. It was like I looked like a jail cell. It was like so. metal or right. Like a, Any other like comments or questions? On the debt, um, at this yeah, time. Terry, if I could, quick note yes, that I jotted down. Quick note that I jotted down later on when the when we put this group together. One of the things I'd like to have come out of the process is what effect on a given amount of borrowing does a change in our credit rating cause. If we go to triple A from triple A down to double A or double A triple A down to whatever the steps are, how much does that really cost us? And and is that a, a an amount that's identifiable or is that a floating number? I think as a percent of the interest, I believe it's the number itself is tough because that's going to depend on the amount of borrowing. So, but if you're looking to, to no, but if we, if we um, were to take a, a, a scenario of a $1 million borrowing and run that through the calculations, I'd like to see that laid out as to what would happen to that borrowing if our credit rating slipped through, say, three steps of the credit rating process so that we really know what we're talking about when we say, we don't want to raid the stabilization fund because it's going to affect our credit rating. Well, how much is that rating going to cost us? I mean, we need to be able to balance that. If we need to raid the stabilization for something we really feel needs to be supported financially, then we should know how much that might cost us uh, in the terms of borrowing down the road. And and okay, well, I that, think I'd like that, to use I think I think you make a good point, and I think that in, in to what I'd like to do though is use a bigger number because and okay. it's out for a longer period of time, because really that's where the 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 costs come in mm -hmm. is if we're able to to get um, debt signed off on, um, and it's a quarter of a percent or it's a tenth of a percent. It it may it may or may not um, be big, but um, what is our rating right now? Double uh, A plus. Double A plus. I think yeah, double A plus. Yeah. Do we have a? Do we have um, a council or consultant that would be if we were to create a subcommittee to look at this that could kind of help us work through these questions? We have our financial advisor that we ask when we are thinking about borrowing projects and yeah, that advises. That's a, that's a pay as we go kind of relationship, right? That is, or is that a retainer? Uh, actually, I mean, I think it's um, when there's borrowing guess, project calculated into that cost. Um, I guess the question would be what uh, the advisor's willingness would be to sit down with the, some people from the finance committee to, to play out a couple of scenarios. Or is that going to be something that, that would be a cost to the town? We can inquire. Yeah, Thank I, you. Because I, I think Dave's point is, a, is an excellent point and <laughs> very timely. Um, I, I think that you know, we need to be thinking about not only that, but also we're operating in a time where interest rates are effectively zero. 
those deltas, I would imagine, would increase as interest rates increase. Um, so that's something that we would need probably the help of a financial expert to kind of help us sort through. Um, but, you know, really what I what I want to get to on this project is some kind of visualization of, you know, Dave threw out a number a few months ago of 10 to $14 million for TC Passios. And I know it was a, a, a pie in the sky number. Could be more, could be less, but whatever. Let's say it's, let's say it's in that ballpark. Given, given all these variables, the timing of it, interest rates, um, you know, what that's likely to mean if we were to come back in a year from now with a debt exclusion proposal, you know, how is that, how, ultimately, how is that, how is that going to affect the tax rate, right, is really what we want to be able to, to start looking at projecting. Um, you know, let's, let's assume that We'll pick a number around TC Pass, uh, excuse me, around Turkey Hill for no other reason than just for planning purposes and discussion purposes. Pick a number, $20 million, assuming that we're getting a reimbursement from the um, school building uh, fund. Kind of do the same thing, right? Um, because what we, may, what we might find is that those numbers – my guess is they're probably going to fall within our policy, but they may fall outside of the of the appetite of the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. And and those those discussions or those those outcomes could have some bearing on um, you know some of the uh, some of the uh, lack of direction or maybe bring some direction. Uh, to some of the issues that we have not been able to resolve uh, around building reutilization and those kinds of things. But, and I think it's part of that discussion. The other piece that has to be brought in is some education around how bonding goes. Because bonding, we don't bond for 30 years. We bond for a couple of years at a time and then go out for a new bond. So whatever the rates are, are going to be pretty much also dependent on the timing of the reissue. Um, unless well, I'm wrong got, about that. We've got bonds that we've, we've got bonds that we're paying right now that were pulled in 2004 and 2005, I believe. Is that we're not still, correct, Karen? Yeah, we're still paying for a parking lot that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think Which parking lot is that? One of the ones at the school, I believe. One yeah, of the I mean schools. The, the subtle difference here is, is that we will, 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 when we take out a 20 year, what we, what, what we might think of from a consumer perspective as a 20 year loan, in actuality, it's 19 or 20 separate bonds. Right. It can be. It can be. It can um, be. Yes. Yeah. And if we could get a 30-year bond for 0% interest, that would be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, all right. So, so, so I guess that, that's going to be it for debt at this point. So the question is going to be what the effect might be of um, our debt service falling on the potential interest rate going down the road. Um, and again, the, the bigger issue, and, and again, we can take another look at the fiscal policies anytime, um, is the, what the, 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 okay. I'm not word finding tonight, but the people who give us our ratings are going to be looking at our ability to, to be consistent with our, our policy application. So we have to be very, very careful what we ask for when we set the policy. So, so what I would, um, what I would suggest is maybe to get this to the point where we've got some tangible outcomes that we're targeting. Um, we should probably get, a list together, stick it on a PowerPoint slide or something of four or five outcomes that we, we've just been discussing here. 
I, I'd be happy to do this. Um, in terms of the information that we're looking to come to. Um, and then from that, from that list, request some guidance from Heather and Karen in terms of how best to go about collecting that information. And is that, you know, primarily going through our financial advisor? Is it doing our own legwork? Um, and, and then, you know, formulating, is this something that we want to do as a committee or a subcommittee? I know that the last time that we talked about this, uh, that part of it, I think, would probably be well done on, in a subcommittee setting because then you're not you're not contingent on public posting and things like that. If we and that would be something good to bring to the general debt discussion. That would be my take on it. Um, I, I don't remember who felt strongly that it would be better to have the whole committee address the um, the debt. Um, question as a group. Um, I have no problem breaking people off into into smaller task groups to, to do that and bring it back. And I think there's also that offers more flexibility in terms of trying to set something up okay. than trying to um, find availability for someone who may not want to come out on a Thursday night at 7 o'clock um, to, to review this. And if that be the case, um, does anybody else, uh, John? Do you have a feeling whether you want, you think this should be a whole group, small group? No, my, just off the cuff, I think a small, small group, two or three people, is much more workable. Okay. And I totally Dave, agree with that. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. And then you know, periodically we bring it back to the full committee when we have something to report that we've made progress on. Hmm. Okay, Peter. Uh, that's fine with me. I, I don't have an. I don't have a strong opinion on that. Jay. Yeah. Either way. Okay. Small committee's fine. I, I can't remember what Michelle wanted. <laughs> I, I do think though. I do think though that when we form the small committee, the the finance committee needs to give it a charge, and the finance committee needs to agree what the anticipated outcomes will be, at at the point of formulation. So that that subcommittee is operating more or less with the with the authority of the finance committee uh, to, to to function and ask questions and do research. That. Yeah, that sounds good. And I think that by the time we meet on the 11th, Heather will know the availability of the financial advisor. Peter, you'll have um, if you have time between now and then to work on the um, PowerPoint. That would be great. We can discuss it on the 11th and then assign the committee or the subcommittee at that time um, to, to work on it. Um, and again, I think the other reason why I'm particularly missing Michelle at this point is I know that she has the, um, um, I don't know what contacts she has through the town finance committee's group that she's active in and, um, whether there's some resources there that we should be availing ourselves of. Um, so, you know, and I'm happy to take a look at that between now and the 11th as well. Um, so we'll set it for on the 11th. We will, aside from um, reviewing town meeting on, for the 13th, um, we will also do the, uh, assign the, the debt group charge. And, we'll charge and assign the, the debt group. Um, it's going to be a busy night, I think. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, maybe we still won't know anything. Um, all right, with that, committee reports. No committee reports. I'll, I'll go first if you want. And then, then yeah, go ahead. I'd like to ask uh, Heather a question after I make a, a committee report, if I could, through you. Um, TC Passio's uh, committee was scheduled to meet uh, next Monday evening. That has been postponed. Uh, I guess we were expecting that there might be some initial report from the uh, architect and engineers uh, 
with their progress on the first phase of uh, putting together information about the, the land plot and whatever they could do uh, under the constraints uh, that we're working under. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what's happened or has not happened, but we've delayed a week um, for that meeting. And Heather, I don't know if you want to make any comment about that now or just wait until we meet in a week and uh, you know, we hash over that as, a, as the TCP committee. We really had to stay with them um, beyond just uh, the proposal that they gave. They needed a formal contract. So it was working out the details of the formal contract before they could start the work. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and I kind of caught that just, we didn't really talk about it, but I think mm -hmm. Tom had made the comment that there were still some I's to dart and T's to uh, cross or, or at least signatures on the actual contract before they could start the work. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, the other question I had for Heather has escape me so it may have to wait till the 11th <laughs> she has email too oh yes um <laughs> any other committee report no okay so with that then i'll open it up for any public comment from anybody on the committee and uh, basically i can't see you right now so i i just have a couple of comments that are not necessarily uh, finance committee related, but definitely related to the town of Lunenburg. Um, the, uh, the efforts that the town has made to uh, simulate and do things as normal as possible um, have really been um, important to a lot of people, uh, specifically the Memorial Day ceremony um, and the work that the school department is doing uh, to try to bring closure to the school year, in particular to the seniors, um, but really students of all ages, um, everybody, everybody is stepping up uh, that I can see. Um, and if they're not, then they're they're hiding pretty well, I think. Um, tonight I attended, and I intended to be late tonight. It finished uh, early. It's amazing when you don't have the applause and the kids walking up to get the awards uh, for the senior award ceremony. Uh, that thing, I, I was expecting a technical debacle and it went off without a hitch. Uh, it was extremely well done. Uh, the administration and staff was super well prepared. Uh, and, um, and I think that they're doing, uh, you know, the best, the best by our students that they could possibly do uh, given the circumstances. Um, and uh, next week, I believe, and I, I should have the time, I'm not prepared, but I'll email it if anybody's interested. Um, the senior motorcade, um, I believe, is next Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. And they've got a route that's a good hunk of the center of town and here, there, and everywhere. Um, and uh, to the members of the committee and anybody who's watching, please come out and hold a sign, wave your hand, cheer, cheer for the seniors. Thanks. And that'll be Wednesday morning? I believe so, yeah. And I'm, I'm checking my calendar now, and if I'm wrong... Um, I'll tell you, yeah, it's Wednesday morning and I believe it's at, uh, it's at 10 AM the third. Well, it might be worth, you know, like basically, you know, taking the morning off from work, going out and getting a sign, holding it up. And yeah. Be... Okay. Um, our next meeting will be June 11th at 7 PM. Um, and until then, I uh, will be happy to accept the motion to adjourn unless anybody has anything last second. Terry, I just ask that, that we keep keep most of the issues that were on tonight's agenda on there so that at least we have the opportunity if there's any new information we can kind of go through the same list we went through tonight or we can just skip right through it very quickly. We will. However, the um, since we've already taken votes on all of our articles, what I might do is make some remark about um, I know that that if there that there may be votes taken on the warrant articles um, because I typically did not I put it in for review but not for um, votes for tonight so when you mentioned that you were going to um, ask for the committee to make a recommendation to to support it um, it 
prompted me to remember. So I'll try to get I'll try to get the agenda out sooner this time too. So. Okay, thank you. Um, and then um, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Do I have a second? John second. John second. Oh, okay. I didn't. Need, I, sorry, I'm not hearing. Um, so, all in favor, John. Aye. Dave. Aye. Jay. Aye. Peter. Aye. And I for myself. So we are adjourned at 8:20 p.m. See you all in a couple weeks. Good night, everybody. Right. Take care. Eight. Eight.